Now let's um, look at other burning issues in the Nigerian energy market, particularly the power sector. The Jenkos and the Discos seem to be in disagreement over the proposed escrow revenue accounts by the federal government. Now, the federal government had indicated plans to centralize and escrow the accounts of the electricity distribution companies alleging non-remittance of um, funds. Let's get to talk more about this with analysts at um, ARM Securities, Philip Anewe. Thank you very much for joining us, um, Philip. Yeah, thank you. Now, what much. do you make of this plan by the federal government to escrow the account of the discos? I think uh, it's a bit mixed, uh, depending on the side of the table you are sitting, uh, as regards to uh, the power value chain, essentially. If you are a disco company or maybe one looking to invest in the disco space, you are a bit burdened, essentially. Because what this means is increase the uh, regulatory uh, oversight on the, on the sector, essentially. And that's essentially negative for businesses as no business will naturally welcome uh, increased scrutiny. So escrowing the account is, in that sense is not uh, positive for them. But then if you are playing in the Genco space or you are a transmission company, of course you smile to it because it means uh, increase the uh, equity in terms of uh, revenue distribution for the businesses. Now putting side by side those arguments by the Genco's and the Disco's, the Genco's of course, um, uh, the discos arguing that they are not making enough profits because um, consumers are not um, paying their bills, you know, and of the Jenkos saying, I mean, they cannot even pay up uh, what the debts that they are owing. Put this together. I mean, where do we now take it off from? I think there's a whole a lot of problem with the value chain, essentially. Uh, talking about the disco guys, they tell you that there are a lot of outstanding, outstanding is over 800 billion, and they are saying that even the government's uh, uh, defense and of course MDS are owing them a lot of money. I think that's essentially a problem, and that's made complicated by a uh, poor metering system, and of course issues with uh, um, estimated billings. You have issues of crazy bills making customers sometimes unwilling to actually remit some of this money. So that's a concern, and that's actually impacted their ability to actually meet their obligation to the Jenkos. For the Genco in turn, as a result of these uh, issues, they are also more or less uh, faced with the challenge meeting obligations to gas suppliers and the likes. So it's a big problem for the industry and of course transmission is not that great. When you look at uh, the sector, you discover that there's some sort of a uh, uh, proposed uh, sharing formula for revenue. Essentially the Genco's are supposed to get about 60% of revenue, while under 11% is supposed to go to the transmission company and the last 25% to so, uh, the discos. But of course, that formula is being impeded by uh, difficulty in remitting uh, revenues from the discourse end, essentially. Now, looking at all of these um, development now, does that mean the privatization process wasn't properly thought out? Yeah, I think uh, there was a problem uh, more or less in the process of privatization prior to now. I discovered that uh, you, they really didn't look at the long-term uh, capitalization requirement that would be needed to actually put these businesses in place, essentially. So they've essentially struggled to meet obligations. There are a lot of them defaulting on loans, a lot of them defaulting on obligations to other players in the value chain. So that's a, a big concern, and that speaks to uh, more or less uh, poor due diligence coming into the period, essentially. Now, do you think the government might probably have to call for recapitalization of um, these companies? I think uh, you want to say uh, capitalization all again because, oh, capitalization. It's, again because <laughs> it's, it's really a big concern. Mm. I think that's, uh, and that also speaks to why they are talking about uh, escrowing their account, revenue accounts of the discos. Essentially the same. Uh, and of course, I think it's also important to note that apart from the disco and the Genco ends, there are also issues with the transmission leg. Because uh, for transmission, you have issues of overloaded the transmission lines. And of course, funding issues is also a big problem. So I think uh, it's a whole, uh, pro, uh, more or less, a whole issue they have to address. Talking about from the Genco, from the Genco's, the transmission, of course, to the discos. Um, our government is also looking to actually provide funding to actually meet some of the obligations, which is positive in a sense, uh, because they are looking to actually provide money or funding to solve the issues of obligation, maybe the gas obligations for the Genco's and the likes, and then more or less allow time to fix the other uh, teaching problems. What about the seven hundred and one um, billion dollar intervention fund? Uh, I think that one is also in line with the efforts to actually more or less plug the holes created by those uh, deficiencies, more or less helping them meet these obligations. And that's why they are making that provision to the Jenkos, essentially. It's essentially to help them meet their obligation to gas suppliers and the likes, uh, while, they also, while they also look for ways to actually address the issues across the other se sections of the value chain. So in all of this, does it mean that Nigerians are far from getting steady power supply? 
I look at data provided by NMPC, discover that uh, gas supply to uh, power plants, especially gas power plants, have been decreasing since October 2016. And that's negative because what it does essentially is to actually impede or more or less inhibit their ability to produce or generate power. So we've seen that more or less impact on uh, power generation numbers. Recently, there are more or less signs that they are more or less trying to uh, uh, get over these concerns. But as far as the Niger data remains volatile, crude and gas uh, production will, all, all, will always be imp uh, impacted, essentially. So that's more or less cast that cloud on uh, uh, power generation going forward. So there's no hope? There is hope, of course, but then you have to address the issue. You have to keep the Niger data happy, more or less try to address the issue. I think the right. uh, government is increasingly uh, making efforts to address the issues of the Niger data, talking about help them, having them to rehabilitate the environment and the likes. All right. I think there is hope, but then in the near term, there are still concerns, and these concerns are very serious. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Philip, for your time. I was Philip Anebe, Investment Analyst with ARM Securities. We take a break now. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you.